This is your weekly trip to paradise, Louisiana style, with Gary Rasponi and Don Dubuque. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Rotolo's Pizzeria. Fresh ingredients, friendly service. That's just the way we Rotolo. Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative. Pro Drive Outboards. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Cracker Barrel Convenience Stores. We have more than you expect. Always fresh, never frozen, raising canes. Louisiana Fish Fry Products. And by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament. Welcome to the wettest May in Paradise, Louisiana, Don. When is it going to stop? They say April showers bring May flowers, huh? March winds, that's what they do. What's that saying? March, March winds bring right, April Just remember this, when, when September, October comes around, you're going to be complaining about how dry it is, and we need rain and all no, that kind September, of stuff. No, September, October. It all balances out. It all balances out. Just when the fish start biting all over, and then all of a sudden it gets muddy. It's and only rain. water. I'm not no expert, and I don't want to be. When we get to the fish report, I'm not going to make any more predictions because I don't know how that chapel on the Mississippi River is going to affect the fishing down on the coast. I, be, I know what I've been taught and heard. I don't know if it's holding true because things are different. It's feast of famine. So, Don, we got a lot of going on. Uh, we got a young All-American here today. Yes, indeed. We've been talking uh, about him. You're going to meet here from Cade Fortenberry. Uh, we we got we got we're gonna visit the Louisiana Mississippi Challenge, the high school challenge. We got some reports right now. Some tournaments came in. The junior bass masters mm -hmm. went to another one that's soon gonna be a sponsor with us, uh, the Island Marina at, at Lake Catherine. Now I'm gonna ask you this question right now. I look on the map. It said Lake Saint Catherine. Some people call it Lake Catherine. What you always been down there? What is it? Lake Saint Catherine? Or? As far as I know, officially it is Lake Saint Catherine, but everybody calls it Lake Catherine. And look, there are so many lakes and rivers and bayous. Got three, four, five names. You just got to know the one you're talking. We might have to start giving them a genus and species like we do on the fish and game, so we'll know exactly. I know last week they were talking about Black Lake. How many Black Lakes they got? You know? I know. What about maybe there ain't that many saints down there anymore since I moved down. <laughs> no, whatever. Now, and, and that that. Uh, oh, wait, you, we got, got a crawfish them. trip coming up today, too. A DIY crawfishing trip. You're going to love this. You're going to want to get the kids in on it for now. Oh, it is. It's fun. It's fun. You've done, I've done it. Oh, yeah. You've done it. I've done it. I do a lot of eating like that, but I'm, <laughs> I like it with the set net the old way. Well, you can right do that now, too. the water's high. Too. All the rivers are high right now. People are doing it right now, even though the crawfish are a little tough. All right. We're so. also going to take a look at some custom catcher baits. You discovered those. Talk about that. Also, our Berkeley Abu Garcia fishing report and Flambeau Outdoor News segment. We got some news to tell you about. We're at Bergeron's Boudin and Cajun Meats in Port Allen, and you're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Hey, I'm Mitch Rotolo, owner of Rotolo's Pizzeria. Our pizzas are prepared every day using the freshest ingredients. But Rotolo's has so much more to offer than just delicious pizza. We have an array of healthy salads and tasty wraps, a wide choice of pasta like spaghetti and chicken parmesan, zesty buffalo wings, and our selection of savory calzones. And don't forget to try one of our amazing desserts. Come into any of our local restaurants or check out our entire menu online at rotolos.com. That's just the way we Rotolo. The CCA Louisiana Star Tournament is doubling down this year. Double the tag redfish. Twice the trucks. Over half a million dollars of prizes awarded in more than 20 categories. Open to all ages, inshore and offshore, youth and or free. Don't let your chance to win swim away. Register at CCASTAR.com or at any Academy Sports and Outdoors. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana. We're at Bajeron's Boudin and Cajun Meats in Port Allen. Boy, the smell in here is great, Gary. It is. You know another great smell, though? Yeah. Think back. Heart of Acadiana, down around Kaplan. Mrs. Rose, bed and breakfast. You know what I'm talking about? That's right. We get ready. We make, make a duck hunt. We get there early. 
and Mr. Barry Toops has done caught a bunch of crawfish and he's got them boiling right there in a little eating place and we eat those crawfish and when it's in the 20 degree range, you freeze them. And you them hadn't you had them all year, the first oh, time you go. It's, oh, man. it's just amazing. We're talking about Crawfish Haven, Barry Toops' place. You've seen us there before. We've always had a great time, whether we're hunting or crawfishing down there. It's a great place to take kids for a first crawfishing trip. It's something that we did as kids, and it's kind of been lost. There's not a lot of people that do it anymore, but kids love it. Well, it's dangerous, too. On the water side, you're going around the pits. You gotta watch your kids. Over here, the water's never gonna be that deep, but it's right. still the same thing. He'll, you can use nets, or he'll take you in that boat that they use like commercial, and and hen and kids are putting them in, sorting crawfish. It, it, it's a tremendous outing, and uh, he's been all over the world now. You know, you see him in French magazines and everything, they talk about crawfish haven. Chris right now and fell in love with the place too because he got a large family and he takes them all down. There. Yeah, well, it's a lot of fun. It's actually an educational process too because I know when we went out there and my little grand nephews and nieces, grand, not great, uh, they had a great time down there and asked a lot of questions. We had a little quiz for them about the crawfish and they learned a lot besides having fun and had some great food too. <laughs> you had to put that in there. You keep on. I'm still with yeah, I still you. Know I'm right. You answer. know I'm right. Let's go down there and check out what Chris LeCock and his family saw at Crawfish Haven in the heart of Acadia. In 2010, I purchased 28 acres from Miss Rose and her nieces and nephews. When I bought the 28 acres, I decided to make a crawfish pond with it. And every time I come check on the crawfish pond, I stop check on Miss Rose. Miss Rose and I got to be very close. And she was 89 years old at the time. And uh, three years after that, she passed away. And when she passed away, uh, the son, her son Charles and Peggy offered me the house and the property behind the house and they ended up purchasing it and at the time I had no clue what I was going to do with it. Well, I brought my relatives from Biloxi crawfishing and they had a blast in the boat crawfishing and she said why don't you do this commercially, take people crawfishing and this is where we are today. That's when I decided to turn this place into a bed and breakfast and we're taking people crawfishing from all over the world now. very unique and we educate you all about crawfish we're going to teach you the sex of the crawfish we're going to teach you uh, where to carry the eggs how many eggs they'll carry um, you know we will educate you about the life cycle of a crawfish and we got a little Cajun twist that we offer here too What, what makes it feel so good is when you get someone that has never ate crawfish before and they're getting, they're getting the, the crawfish from the pond to the table is really rewarding. And then you put like three pounds of crawfish in a tray and they said, oh, I can't eat all that. And they'll eat three pounds plus. But I got to teach them how to peel them most of the time. Take the catch, we come back here, we clean them good and we'll ball them for you that evening or that afternoon. We also fishing with the nets the old fashioned way and it is free actually because 
you're not guaranteed to catch. Some days are going to be better than others. We've, we've had people that come here and in, uh, in an hour catch 20 pounds of crawfish, and some people have to fish all day to catch 20 pounds of crawfish. So it's, it's a hit miss, but we, we do offer the old Cajun way of fishing with nets, the old fashioned way. I've had people this year from France, from Canada, from Ireland. I guess we, we take all this for granted, but people that have never seen crawfish before, you actually being able to, to go from the pond to the table with them, it, it's real exciting for them, you know. Ask me about my Tempur-Pedic. Ask me how fast I fall asleep. Why not talk to someone who's sleeping on the most highly recommended bed in America? Ask me about staying asleep. Tempur-Pedic owners are more satisfied than owners of any traditional mattress brand. Ask me how it feels after 10 years. Tempur-Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America. Ask about Tempur-Pedic at Olin's, where you know you always get the guaranteed low price. Olin's is the only store in Baton Rouge and Lafayette with the full line of Tempur-Pedics. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana, and today we're honored to have a Bass Fishing All-American High School, Cade Fortenberry. Cade, glad to have you here. Me too. We've been reading your clippings and seeing your pictures and your video. Glad to get you here in the station. Yeah, it's been a blast. Tell us about your journey on this trip. Where did it start? Uh, what you've done along the way to get there? I guess this year it started on the uh, Red River. We won that. It was a high school state qualifier. Then we moved on, we went to Toledo Bend, came in 10th, and then I applied for All-American. I made All-State, and then I made All-American, and we went to Texas. How tough is that? You went through it pretty quick, but how tough is it to get to that point? How many uh, people make Bassmaster All-American? There was right at 400 entries to be All-American, then there was 70 All-State anglers with honorable mentions too, and then they chose 12 from that 70. So basically 12 out of 400. When did you know you had a shot at this thing? At what uh, point? When I, made, when I found out I made the All-State. I was like, well, that's less I gotta make it from. It's 69 out of 400. And then uh, I got a text from one of my Illinois friends, because he, uh, he made it too. I was at work, I didn't even know I made it until he texted me. I was like, I gotta go check my email. <laughs> so. so where do you go from here? What's ahead? Uh, Mid-July, I mean mid-June, we got the national championship, high school national championship. 2015, we were lucky enough to get second. This year, I want to try to win it. And how many will you be fishing against? How many competitors? I believe it's around 200 of the best high school English. And where is this going to be held? 
Uh, Paris, Tennessee on Kentucky Lake. Now you fished there before? Yes. And what this, do you know about it? Uh, this is my third year. It's a lot, it's deep, shallow. It's been one shallow every year, but there are people that catch them deep. We're gonna try to do a little bit of both. And what's your favorite bait to throw? Favorite, probably anything Delta Lures makes, Thunder Jig, Spinnerbait Jig, and then a Missile Base D-Bomb. What's been the biggest surprise on this trip that you've made? Is it dealing with the media, sponsorships, uh, other fishermen? Probably dealing with the media. Yeah, we can be a pain in the neck, can't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, uh, fishing with Kobe Krieger for the All-American, he's mm -hmm. a trip, he's from Florida. He, uh, he showed me a little bit different things, how to use different baits and stuff like that. Have you had an idol? You know, a lot of youngsters as they're coming up, they'll they'll identify with a football hero or baseball uh, or basketball. Pro fisherman that you really tried to emulate? Uh, I started off with Skeet Reese, all the yellow rods. I had all the yellow rods. And and then I kind of moved on to more like Cliff Crochet, Greg Hagney, because I do a lot what they do. Mm -hmm. So, As far as support and help, who's been the biggest help for you? Uh, probably my mom and dad and family. Like, they've been the biggest help having them behind me. Kate, if somebody wants to pursue the same type of uh, endeavor you've gone after, how do they get started in it? Uh, the Junior Southwest Bassmasters out of Denver Springs, they meet every, I think it's the Thursday, first, second Thursday of the month. They have a good club. It starts off at age seven and all the way to age 18. They have a monthly tournament. It gets you involved, knowing how to fish the tournaments, the, when you got to come in, all the rules. So. And does it matter geographically where you where you are? Uh, not really. They take a, they kick anybody in. They uh they vote on where they want to fish. So if you got a place you want to go fish, you raise your hand, you vote on it. They it's like a sanctioned club almost. What kind of resources do you need? Do you have to have your own boat or access uh, to a boat and equipment? You just have a boat with a live well, running motor, and then your rod and reel that you want to fish with. What would you say to someone who's considering getting into what you're doing? You know, it, look, it's a commitment. You know, yeah. a lot of people are torn between a lot of things. Uh, other ball sports are out there and a lot of commitment on that part. And to do this and to do it on the level that you yeah. achieve takes a commitment. It takes a commitment, but I played football for four years for Santa Monica High School. I played football and then I fished. It takes a commitment, but the rewards is a lot. What will either winning or a high placing in this next big tournament mean to you? What's that going to mean? Uh, it'll mean a lot. It'll send me off to college on a good note. I'll be fishing for probably ULM in college. So. And what are your aspirations as far as a career? Are you decided on something? Uh, I'm probably going to go to ULM, study pharmacy, have something to fall back on if fishing doesn't turn out well. So fishing would be your primary If I can make it, yes. It. Yeah. Well, good luck to you. Thanks for coming by here. And anything you want to say to the fans out there? Uh, just good luck fishing. Well, you're doing a great job representing us back here in Louisiana. Yes, and keep up the good work. Yes, sir. All right, we'll be right back with more Paradise, Louisiana. Who doesn't want to save money on fuel? Now, Shell and the Fuel Rewards Network are putting you in control of how much you pay for fuel. Simply buy whatever's on your shopping list clothes, groceries, even dinner out, and earn cents per gallon savings at participating retailers nationwide. Now, fuel prices are in your hands. So why wait? Sign up at FuelRewards.com today and turn shopping power into saving power. Visit Cracker Barrel convenience stores before heading fishing or hunting. We have more than you expect. You're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change has been keeping cars and trucks in Baton Rouge clean and running smooth for over 50 years. At Benny's, we feature professional car washing, complete detailing, high-tech waxing and buffing, interior cleaning, and tire shine. Benny's, one stop for car maintenance with complete oil and lube services and even state inspections at our express locations. Visit one of our five convenient locations, including our newest store on Greenwell Springs Road. And don't forget to stop by Beef Quick Convenience Store and Fuel Stop. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Drive in dirty, drive out clean. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana, and you'll see more of Cade Fortenberry coming up shortly. Gary, high school bass fishing, there are so many facets to this. Southwest Bass Masters, what's Man, going on? We showed y'all a little bit uh, of the challenge mm -hmm. that these people have been putting together, but it's growing by leaps and bounds. We're one of the first ones that want to initiate kids like Cade, starting back them, 
Union Southwest Best Mass, our Livingston Parish, uh, the Bros and Hoover, you know, Jim and Cindy Bro and uh, Gene Hoover and Endo and all these parents. And that's, that's one thing we've been leaving. Uh, you can you talk to Kate, you ask him what you know what you what you attribute. Now, who support you? Who gives you support? Man, you heard what he said first. You off, watch right. those kids here all the time. You see them that furnishing their boats and getting them out on the water, and all these people raising the outdoors. Now that if you see at the landing how packed they were for that challenge, it was packed. These parents was turning up and showing out. So this. It's them, them. I'm going to name you the winners real quick. The Southwest, by the way, they were Island Marina, Lake St. Catherine, Lake Catherine, right there on Highway 90, mm -hmm. not far from the Wrigley's. First place, Ein Madea, 9.35 pounds. That's the 15 to 18. He had big bass, Ein Madea, with 2.78. The 11 to 14, Connor Russian from Pride. He had 7.39, and big fish, big fish was by Logan Guy with 2.96, almost three pounds. Now, that, you know, if you know that there, that's moss. Yeah. There's some big fish that have been caught in there if you're going toward the Mystico and everything, but these kids couldn't run anywhere. But all that rain, the, the Sunday rain, wouldn't it, they, they didn't have to deal with like we had the last two days, okay? But they still, that river's been running high, so they, this was a tremendous catch. Everybody was happy. They loved the way they was tripped. Uh, I said, uh, I said, big fish. Caden Sellers, 7.95. At uh, two point, I'm sorry, big bass is Caden Sellers with 2.64. They held up with Brett Sellers with 9.82, and big bass was Dion Landry with 2.67. Now, did I leave anybody out? I don't know if I did or not, but congratulations to them at Southwest. Bass Masters for what all they doing. And now the proof's in the pudding. They done had national champions, the all Americans, state champions, They're all coming out of that one club that started in Denham Springs. Now it's to went all over. We got Central right there in the area. I won the state championship and it just keeps growing. Keeps growing, there's a lot of competition. So them kids, uh, they competitive. There's many big bass tournaments you know. There's so much interest in that. People say we might spend too much time on it. I don't think so. Do you? No, I, I was with some kids on Saturday. Uh, there was a little casting contest in all the different local North Shore, Washington Parish, St. Tammany. Some came all the way across the lake from Jefferson Parish to compete over there, doing trash talking, the whole thing is a lot of fun. Yeah, it is that. So. All right, let's go take a look at what we saw a little bit of last week, the Louisiana Mississippi High School Challenge. What was that all about? It was the first time. I, I got on them. You remember, you and Joe corrected me one time. Ain't no such thing as the first annual's inaugural. So I was picking on uh, Tony Stevens, the director from Mississippi. He the one who ever got started in Gene Hoover. But uh, they had jambalaya. In fact, <laughs> Kay's daddy kept feeding me jambalaya. You know, I, I was a little late, but uh, he kept Gilbert was feeding me that jambalaya, and I was trying to do it. Do it all. Can't do it all. Let's go over there and you see what happened. Here, talk to some of the winners and where they're from, what they thought about the challenge. So, here we go. First ever Mississippi Louisiana challenge. We have 20, 20 teams from uh, Mississippi versus 20 teams from Louisiana. And we're going to add up the, the total weight and somebody's going to take home that trophy. And this is Mr. Tony Stevens. He's the Mississippi director. And most yes, sir. Of most of y'all know me. I'm Gene Hoover, the Louisiana director. And uh, it's Mr. Jim Bro with the Junior Southwest Bassmasters. Yeah, we're going to see, first, like I said, the first annual, we're going to see who brings home the trophy. Hopefully the Mississippi boys are going to do it. But if the Louisiana boys do it, that'll be all right, too. We'll That's right. Some shit. That's right. <laughs> I, I think we're going to have fun. That's what the main thing is. Have fun. Austin Hannah, this Ogre, Mississippi. Bryce Bullock, Ogre, Mississippi. Uh, Boat number. Louisiana. Uh, Mason Hebert, Ponchatoula, Louisiana. We've got five fish. What y'all think about this challenge? This is the first yeah. ever. What do y'all think about this? Going against another state. I think it's going to be a pretty good state. tournament. You know, I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be a pretty good tournament. You know, Louisiana versus Mississippi. You know, um, 
I think it'll just have bring out a lot of good anglers from both states, you know? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you were watching it too. Y'all fished the pearl before? Yeah. William Byrd from Brandon, Mississippi. Yep. Blake Norworthy from Brandon, Mississippi. Mississippi, we had a state championship and an Opens championship in junior high, and they won the Opens championship and qualified to go to nationals. We're pretty excited about it. Yeah, ready to go. Congratulations. All right, guys. Way ready to go. go yeah. In every paper, on TV, Huh? All right, How does it feel to be the number one day champion? Well, it feels pretty good. I we got to the top five today. How did I do? Oh, it didn't go very far today. I to, uh, only got three. How many pounds you got today? Probably four. Four point five. Four, four, four. You have, five pounds. You ever fish? He fished all the time on before? our trail. How does that? Sam Brock. From where? Federal High School. Steve Stevens, Federal High School. Yeah, and, and that's proud daddy, and also you're the dire state director of yes, Mississippi. Sir. Met you already one time. Tony Stevens. Yes, sir. Tell me, how, how do y'all put this together? We just sit down and, and um, go school to school, and put it together, and put it on paper, and make it happen. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. I guess there'll um, be more to come. Y'all going to go to Alabama? Y'all? I don't know. Okay. Right now, we can stick to Louisiana. Mr. Eugene's a great guy. Me and him sat down, made it up, and made it happen. So. Sound like a great deal. Guys, where'd y'all fish today? Real quick, everybody wait. Uh, no, this won't air for another away. week, huh? A long ways away. Louisiana. Justin Watts and Cade Fortenberry also both qualified to go to the national championship in Kentucky Lake. 9.75. 9.75. New leaders. Hey, man. Graduated the other day, and you're ready to top it all off in Kentucky Lake, right? Yes, sir. And then it's on to college. Yes, sir. And you're ready to go get them? Yes, sir. All right, man. What did you fish on today, right? What'd you catch your fish on? Uh, Justin caught them on black topwater frog. I caught them on finesse line. Oh, OK. So y'all <laughs> y'all fishing? South? Where we all fishing? South or north? Uh, south. All right, big bass winners from Pedal High School, Pedal, Mississippi, with a bass of 2.95 pounds. Congratulations. All right, guys, congratulations. Here we go, Mississippi. You had a total combined weight, 98 pounds, 17 ounces. All right, Mr. Eugene. Louisiana, 111 pounds, 24. Congratulations. I need, I need all of Louisiana anglers to get up here. Let's go. Come awesome on, here, Congratulations. Good job. Sight casting redfish in the Louisiana marsh is this exciting. Oh, sure. To make it even more exciting, the Louisiana Redfish Series, partnered with Tito's Handmade Vodka, will add $10,000 to the first place team of each of this year's events, plus a $20,000 payoff to the grand champion. It all starts in April, so register your team now and come out to see the most exciting tournament series Louisiana has to offer. The Louisiana Redfish Series, partnered with Tito's Handmade Vodka.
Back to Paradise, Louisiana. Gary, you know, one of the things we do frequently on this show is we introduce new products, baits especially, and you found some called Custom Catcher Baits. Well, yeah, it's Scott Burdick, he's traveled all over. He sells a lot of them up, but all of them off his internet right now, okay? He, he's working on investors, and uh, he was good friends with Wanda Stewart, and they talked back and forth and been on the website. And it was very interesting. You and I bring different baits and different products. And even though we got bait manufacturers and everything we push, you don't have to help them. But here to help this guy, to see what you thought, something unique. His name is Scott Burdick. He started his company on his own. Uh, he brought us a bunch of baits over there. He didn't give me none yet, but he's going to send us some. But there's some of the old baits that we fish with that can be convertible. You, you can make seven different baits out of one little old kit, different colors and everything else. So here we go, I set him down at a table and he showed me some of the things he can do with this kit and make these baits. These are called Custom Catchers. I'm Scott Burdick, the inventor and owner of Custom Catcher Lures. And we make, basically make two basic baits. The first one is a jointed minnow. But our joint of minnow is a little different than everybody else's in that it's 100% modular. First of all, every kit comes with seven different lips, seven different actions, seven different depths. Here's a lip I just pulled out. I can pick out any other lip I want, put it in there, and change the lure instantly to a different kind of lure, a different kind of action. Okay. The mid hook is just on a loop like this. When you put it in, like that, and then you pick out the lip of your choice and put that in, that tube goes down through the center of that loop, right, locks, locks it in place. So now it can't come off. Also, the lures come with a set of weedless trebles and a set of regular trebles. So you can use either one. There's a full set for each. Once you separate the lure like this, the front half or the back half can be used independently. This is now a weedless popper by itself, surface popper. Or I can customize it further, just like that, and put on a, a little feathered hook on the back to make it a more attractive surface popper. Okay. Or I can put it all back together and make it into a lure with a, a trailer on it. You can make it a floating diving bait, you make yep. it a suspended bait. Suspended bait, diving, yep. And a top water popper. So now it's a jointed minnow again, but with a, a tractor on the rear. The lips also come in colors, chartreuse and red, so you can put in a color accent on the front, or if you want, as well. So any of these choices can be used in place of the rear end of the lure. So in other words, you can take, take this off, and now this bait is ready to be customized. So anything you want to try to put back here, you can put back there. These soft baits all work back here. Yeah, sure. Okay, like, yeah. like, like this. I got it. This is Scott Buddy. Yes, sir. I'm impressed with your bait. Where we fished this evening, we had so much north wind, it was muddy. It, it was very hard for Brutal. any bait. We just to try, you know, I tried some of my special baits. It was just tough. We had one bad, one red fish on, but you can, I'm sure you're going to be here. We're going to come back. We're going to try them baits. But the main thing is very unique what you got. You're not in any stores. How can people watching Paradise Louisiana get in touch with you and order a kit? Well, they can go to the website, which is customcatcher.com, and you can order directly on there. And it has a full menu of all the things that you can buy. And then uh, you can also call me directly at 1-800-CATCH-1-2. Right, I got your card. Tell them one more time. Uh, What's one, your website? Okay. Custom, Customcatcher.com. Customcatcher.com. As members of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative, we've all got a job to do. 
And the more we work together, the more we save. That's the power of your co-op membership. Demco, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Welcome to the Flambeau Outdoor News segment, and Gary, we are in the middle of Safe Boating Week, so we want to make all the listeners and viewers aware that there are going to be enforcement out there, not just to write up citations, but also to promote safety awareness in boating. The different classes. Joe had a big article on what you need in your boat right. to pass Coast Guard inspections and stuff. And so you can go on the website, you can go to Coast Guard, you can go to Wildlife and Fishers. They got hints everywhere to make sure that you're safe. And it's really being embarrassed to see about wearing them life jackets. And Don, I gotta say this again. I get more emails, people talking about why y'all don't wear y'all life jackets. I don't know. I wish I could tell y'all. I start wearing my little light one. I make sure I don't take video of these captains. Right. Saltwater captains, I don't know why. They I, I can't convince them. I don't know if they're running shallow water or marsh, but I can't get them to wear a life jacket. That's the way they do it. I don't know. I agree with the people that write my letter. Everybody ought to be wearing life jackets. They do save lives. Bass, bass guys, I guess them boats are going every them canals. Well, it's a they tournament wear. requirement for right. a lot of them that they have well, to have it on. And the other one's up to the discretion. Nobody's breaking any laws. It's strictly up to the discretion of the person in the boat whether they want to have one on I, or not. I, since I got that light one, I, I wear it. So. Anything right. else on that? On the, what other kind of news we got? Well, we got the big red snapper season. The whole three days that the federal government is allowing us to go catch red snapper in federal waters. And we're going to be down there uh, covering, you know, the, the Golden right. Medal, Fushan International Tarpon Rodeo on the open, one of those three opening days of red snapper season. And, of course, the reports are always good. we got three days, June 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. However, if you do want to fish with a charter captain, they've got 49 days. And that's not a lot of days, so if you're interested, Call one of the captains that fish offshore and book your trip before they get well, booked. Well, the star up. is starting right now. Nah, that's right, as too. As long as you're fishing in the state waters, you can catch those snapper and you can weigh it in in the star. That's right. So that's star tournament, start. Memorial Day weekend, all the way through Labor Day, ccastar.com. And we, got the, we will have a master speckled trout angler for Louisiana declared by this weekend. That's it. They'll be calling over there. That's all the tournaments we're going to mention now. I will be there, but... To let y'all know, this next month, in June, and then coming up, you got all your school alumni rodeos. Right. We're going to run them on the screen, and that's Rumble, Jesuit, Catholic High. They're all coming up in June, so you stay tuned and just watch our event calendar coming up. Another thing I want to give a shout-out, the Zachary High School DU chapter. Now, do you, you remember? Past Masters are getting high school chapters. With DU right now having high school chapters, not only the university's got chapters, but the Zachary High School chapter, a good friend of mine's daughter, one of the bushes over there, they have their banquet and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, they were out at Freshwater Bayou planting those moss grasses, having a good time. You see them little girls and boys, they're all in that mud doing it, doing something good. And just to give you a reminder, Mike Staley sent me a picture of some green heads. I think they came from Arkansas, but this is unbelievable to see them. Just to get your adrenaline flowing and thinking about, it's never too early to get ready for duck season. So, and then orchards in Louisiana schools, I got a newsletter event that their grants or whatever they get them or whatever they did it, at a hundred thousand dollars in grants they went to 60 schools in Louisiana. Archery season, 4-H, the 4-H shoot coming up. We got somebody. We got four kids going to the nationals in Nebraska, also in the middle of June, or June 24th. So. All right, last thing I want to talk about in the news, this is the last weekend for the spring squirrel season in Louisiana. I did finally get a report. Somebody got nine or ten of them in their backyard. Nine. So they're going to be having squirrel gumbo. They live in a place where it's legal to shoot in the backyard, so during the spring season they got some squirrel. I, can, I think I can shoot in my yard, but uh, 
I mean, why not feed them? Uh, Fatten them up for the fall, huh? Can I give them one other news? Sure. You know, my birthday this past week, I went to a concert. People our age, you know Jimmy Clanton? Yep. The best thing on there, he was singing, he was doing all the old songs, Fast Domino, and when he was, we were all raised, he had people dancing in the aisle, taking pictures. The main thing he told me, he living in Philadelphia now, and, and, and he fishes. He fishes for smallmouth bass exclusively. He's coming back for his 60th class reunion next year. He's going to be on Paradise, Louisiana. I took a picture with him up there on the stage. I'll show y'all. He's it, just an amazing guy, how good he looks and how good his voice is, still sounds. Almost as good as me. <laughs> That's it. That's all, all right. The news we got. Coming back with the Berkeley Abu Garcia Fishing Report here on Paradise, Louisiana. Who doesn't want to save money on fuel? Now, Shell and the Fuel Rewards Network are putting you in control of how much you pay for fuel. Simply buy whatever's on your shopping list clothes, groceries, even dinner out, and earn cents per gallon savings at participating retailers nationwide. Now, fuel prices are in your hands. So why wait? Sign up at FuelRewards.com today and turn shopping power into saving power. Visit Cracker Barrel convenience stores before heading fishing or hunting. We have more than you expect. Jackson, and you know we always say we gather our groceries out the bayou. Whether it's freshwater, saltwater, catfish, redfish, you have tons of choices when it comes to fish in Louisiana. But when I fry fish, there's only one choice, and that's Louisiana fish fry. My new favorite, the Cajun fish fry, has the perfect amount of cornmeal, corn flour, and the perfect mix of spices that really bring the heat. Hey, if you're craving Cajun, go look for the bright red bag at your local grocers. Bring home the taste of Louisiana with Louisiana Fish Fry. Today on Dockside TV, we're gonna be catching nice trout. Using a different method of, we're gonna be trolling the trestle of Lake Pontchartrain. train. Chance. What we're doing today is trolling the trestle, simply casting out the matrix shad on 3 8 and half ounce jig heads. There's a lot of different lures that work good for this, rattle traps, mirror lures, a lot of hard baits. Today they're hitting plastics, we're burying it up on jig head size, and the trick to this is speed of the boat and distance of how much line you let out. Look how clean that water is. It's had a big north wind. Put this one out. Pretty nice fish. 16, 17 inch average. I'm Mitch Rotolo, owner of Rotolo's Pizzeria. Our pizzas are prepared every day using the freshest ingredients. But Rotolo's has so much more to offer than just delicious pizza. We have an array of healthy salads and tasty wraps, a wide choice of pasta like spaghetti and chicken parmesan, zesty buffalo wings, and our selection of savory calzones. And don't forget to try one of our amazing desserts. Come into any of our local restaurants or check out our entire menu online at rotolos.com. That's just the way we Rotolo. Welcome to the Berkeley Abu Garcia Fishing Report. Gary, I want to start off with fresh water and one of the best reports I got, and I know you got them too, goggle eyes starting to show up. This is goggle eye time of the year. Yeah, that's right. It's goggle eye. I was, <laughs> you get me all excited. John Giot, 
You know, at, uh, he, he fished it with Keith Lusser. Mm -hmm. He sent me a little video. I don't know if Chris can use it, but he sent some pictures. Them big sack catching. <clears throat> John told me, he said, come on, do a trip. We're catching 12 inch goggle eyes. That's bigger than what we used to catch in the spillway. That, that, that's some big goggle eyes. So I, I'm anxious to go there off the Pearl River, not far from you. Yeah. And I, oh, they got a lot you of know, you and yeah. Jeff. Oh, we, yeah, we used to waylay them in a well, couple all, spots. Always over there, ain't it? To Funky River, all them places. But we just got five inches of rain in Central one day and three and a half the another day. I, I can we, What do we, you consider the goggle eye? I, I know it's classified as part of the brim and it comes under the limits, but it's also known as a warm mouth bass. Yeah. It's got a lot of characteristics it, of a, a bass, sun, you know? It's a sunfish family. Bass is sunfish. Right. Brim sunfish. They're all in the sunfish but, family. But it's not it doesn't come under any bass limits. No. I don't I don't I don't know. I no, don't it does not. It's, no, it's, it should it's be considered under a brim. brim. It's under brim. Brim, yeah. Uh, and, and another thing is that the island marina, they were talking about freshwater fish, saltwater fish, that that place is the same thing in the Rigolese. Mm -hmm. There's so many places of fish over there in, in your parish. <laughs> I'm learning more and more of my parish. I registered a boat now. You gonna tell me who to vote for? I don't know who all them people oh, are. Oh, I there. can fill you in on all that. You gonna tell me who the bear was on? You know, Maybe. Dylan? Now, let's talk fishing. Now, that, the fresh water good, the Pearl River. And we telling y'all now, all these rivers right now are swollen. But you'd be surprised how fast that runoff it is. If we get some days that ain't raining, in about three or four days, you can start fishing them. They'll start clearing up, mm -hmm. and the runouts are still working. And, and most I, of those areas, you, know, you can head down to the marsh, too. You, you know, right. There's a it lot of fresh water fishing in the marshes as well as up there. We're going to be moving mm -hmm. fresh water in. Uh, down in Venice, is another place. The river's supposed to be high. It's supposed to be 17 to 18 feet. Mississippi River's going to be a problem. A lot of flooding right now coming here across the bridge. It's all the way up about, about five foot from the top of the levee. There's a lot of problems I don't want to tell you in Chapel Island Spillway. But in the Barrett area, I'm getting tremendous reports. All the dead end canal around Sherman, Cherami, uh, Grassy Lake, Lake Barrett, Bay I said, mm -hmm. they still catching Sacolay and Brim and them dead end canals. You find that water. This rain, they're gonna have some runoff, they'll be muddy. But as soon as it clears up, it's affected by the rain, but that's it. The rivers are not getting in there yet unless it gets to be a big flood stage, and then it'll start affecting the marsh. But that's the only place I'm getting reports. Toledo Bend is hot again. Sacale, mm -hmm. I'm getting reports. People sending me pictures. Grant Bailey, he didn't quit bad fishing. He fished in Sacale. He sent me a, bu a bunch of pictures of it. Uh, and then going back again and talking about, you see what those kids did at Junior Southwest Bassmasters. That's some good weights. That's almost a two pound average, and a lot mm -hmm. of those are marsh bass. So uh, I can't tell you. Bayou Tick, Round Vermilion, Slate A Bear, the sports fishing Vermilion Bay's catching saltwater fish and freshwater fish, catching catfish. Him and his wife, Kel, she's got a picture with a big flounder fishing the Boston Canal uh, and, the, and the New Jetties, all in Vermilion Bay. So that's what I got fresh water. And well, that's now water Toby water. Cooper uh, was fishing in the Pearl River single circuit. That was held up out of Pools Bluff on the Bogachitta. Of course, they got the, the Pearl River Canal as fishable there, the Pearl River to Bogachitta. And he landed big bass. He won big bass with a 5.13, which is a nice fish coming from up there. So that's some good fishing on the upper reaches. But you know, the good thing we're talking about some of these rivers with all this rain we've had being swollen up and, and tough to fish. The good thing is if you fish both salt and fresh water, you're in an area where you can just move right on down and start catching speckled trout and reds if the bass fishing slows down. Well, I tell you what, Don, there's a lot of tournaments been going on and a lot of results. We tell people to send us results. I'm gonna make this real quick. Bud Light Tournament was over there at Dry Runs Landing. Steve Fontana, good friend of ours, good reporter. Him and Brad Bowie had first place. 16.46 pounds, tough day of fishing, a lot of wind, they went, and where they fished, he didn't tell you exactly, but I'm sure it was in the Lake Barrette, the Bell River side. They won $2,540 and big bass. They had, they had big bass with 4.50. The Oak Point Classic, the kayak and them over there. Uh, Darren Clay with 14 pounds and two ounces. Second was Josh Ripple. 
with 13.22, and Ron Alleman with 13.21 was third place. So thank y'all for the report out of there. All right, nice payout on that. Well, this is the lake break and salt water report I just picked up this morning. You know, we had some bad weather moved in last weekend. A lot of people canceled trips. But one guy who did not cancel it was Deadly, Deadly Dudley Vandenboy, and he caught some nice speckled trout out there by the bridges in Pontchartrain last week. So as long as the weather continues to be a, any kind of good way to get out there, light winds or even mediocre winds, you find clean water, there's still a lot of speckled trout out in that Slidell area. Uh, you fished at Delacro, and they're still Delacro. catching fish out there. I got a mm -hmm. report. Rick Capo, my fishers with Mime Goday. Mime fishes just anywhere. He won't tell you, he won't let you take a camera. But everybody goes down there, you go to Sweetwater. They know who Mime Goday is. He, he bears himself come down and fish. He'll run straight to them. He'll see the birds, like you said, or yep. he knows where those reefs are. He'll right. stop me. Nobody around him and no boat. And he's catching. Once he gets somebody fish his plastic, but most time it's live shrimp. Well, once you yeah. get out in that area uh, in the big bays out of Delacro, what you got there is you got a lot of sunken islands from coastal erosion, and they're not completely sunk. They're out of sight. You can't see right. them, but basically it's little reefs under there. And if you know and remember, like Myron does, he goes back that's way like, back. That's like in Buras over there Same at the thing. west side Same when I go there with Ryan Lambert. We find them little Structures. islands. Still see some old piling, some up, some old camps, and that's where they catch them. Uh, people that are running their feet. You see all them pictures that we sent y'all last week and Lafitte doing the same thing, mm -hmm. but they running Manila Bay, they running toward Grand Isle. And ain't that far running, they're yep. catching those big trout, nice trout. Uh, Don, when you was fishing with Ahab, I see y'all were fishing mostly plastic. Y'all had no live shrimp? No, we all? had both. We were fishing. Okay, I but didn't, when oh, you get I, under the birds and they're hitting like that every cast, you don't want to fool with live shrimp with that, you know? That's what I was talking about. I saw the ones y'all was coming in a boat. I've seen them baits on there. Mostly the Matrix Shads. Yeah, and, and poor Jody Donwa, he's booked solid. I don't know why I'm running his pictures, but he has really been taking some people, his old customers. They're coming in from out around the country, from Alabama, Mississippi, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Delta. Jody keep sending them. Like I can said, I I don't know how that's going to help you. You book solid all the way through the drive. So if you want to try, call him and book early. So at Delta Marina, Jody's catching them. All his fish have been coming on live shrimp, too. Grand Isle is feast of famine. I got people sending Tommy Midrain. They sit there, and all of a sudden, it gets calm. The water, the wind quits blowing. He'll run out to the rocks, grab him some pokies, and catch 10 or 12 big fish, some up to 23, 24 inches. Big trout to come back. Uh, yesterday, he was sitting over there, and the storms all left. He said, I look at how calm it was. I took my boat out because the storms were supposed to be bad. If my boat would have been in there, I would have ran out there and catch him. Uh, Gilbert was talking about Lanier and them people fishing in the, the, the surf, Elmer's Island, and right in front of the camp, right in front of the camp mm -hmm. at, at Grand Isle, fishing top water, catching some beautiful trout on top water, like the old days. You know, you get you a good top water bait, your favorite top water bait, and uh, even the the, the diving baits, they're slow diving and they're doing them, under, keeping them under the water. Jerk baits, they're catching some beautiful trout right now. Red is a good color too. I got some good pictures from Darrell Carpenter, sent some uh, speckled trout in that he caught uh, the week leading up to the weekend before the Grand Isle Speckled Trout Rodeo. So hopefully they'll get some good weather and it will be on down there for that master angler competition. Now, I, I didn't really, like you said, I thought I knew how to figure the river and listen to all the experts, to read Joe's column, listen to you. I, I'm really confused right now. How that river is not affecting, that river is blowing out right now. That muddy water, do you get a southwest wind and then it affects, you, you might find little pockets, mm -hmm. you know, over to the, to the east. Then you get an east wind and blowing clear water in, does that help? And then trout show back up. They go to Venice, they filter, the river's high. I really don't. It's really confusing. And what about Big Lake? You know, how is it affected by it? I haven't rivers? gotten a lot, good, yeah. a lot of good. I, I really need to learn more. And I may able to get somebody expert and tell us one time really how to predict the river and how to pick the court. But right now, it's Feast of Famine. I know guys are killing big fish. Bay Elwha, that's the place you fish all your yep. life. Uh, Barry McSane, or uh, Remy McSwain. Uh, 
caught a big redfish in there, and they've been limited out on redfish in there, and they're catching a few trout right here. Well, speaking of redfish, I talked to Mike Gallo. He said he's had a little bit difficult. I mean, he's catching redfish, but not like he thought he should. But he's uh, more than making up for, for the great speckled trout season that's over there in his area around that Biloxi Marsh. And he fishes Lake Bourne and all that area over that way. Tom LeBlanc and Ryan Amy, Cesar Garcia, they go every week. Sometimes they spend one or two days. They travel. They give that report like you've never seen. Maybe one day. I'll go to our website. We might start running that report. This is how you write a report. You can go back year after year and know where you're good. He gives you the moon phase, the tide phase, everything about it. And that's the way he did it. And my neighbor, they back fishing. They were affected by the flood. Also, Sylvia Terrio sent me a four-year-old, Keegan. Big redfish, got his photo and a video clap. A four-year-old fighting a redfish. I think that's it with me, Doc. All righty. Well, that should do it. Uh, don't forget, send us your pictures. Give us a little report where you fished, how you caught them, and we'll share it with our viewers and uh, maybe help them catch some fish, too. And we'll be back again next week with another edition of Paradise, Louisiana. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Rotolo's Pizzeria. Fresh ingredients, friendly service. That's just the way we Rotolo. Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative. Pro Drive Outboards. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Cracker Barrel Convenience Stores. We have more than you expect. Always fresh, never frozen, raising canes. Louisiana Fish Fry Products. And by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament.